And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a print and play title uh, from designer Lejos Bronze and printed by Andrew Tullison of Print and Play Productions. Uh, this is a game where you're going to be picking up and delivering or really just moving goods along railroads that you build, uh, producing goods and moving them in order to get money over a series of three years uh, or game rounds. Uh, so real quick, why don't we take a look at how this two to three player game plays. We will get some idea of the components that you'll be using in the game, and then we'll come back here and get my final opinions on it. So here you can see the components for Dai Tao, which is a goods delivery game in which you're going to be building railroad tracks on these islands in order to try and move goods to towns or harbors to earn money. The game is either a two or a three player game, uh, and you can see the components here for the white player, the black player, and the red player, as well as some money. They have three money discs and one money discs. The game takes place over three years, each year divided into five rounds, and each round divided into four phases. Uh, that's a lot of things I know, but don't worry about it. Now, uh, each year that has those five rounds is going to be divided up by what is being produced, either fish and imports, or fish, fish and imports, fish and sugarcane, or at the end, taxes. But before we get to production, we're first going to determine turn order. Now, in a three-player game, you simply have a round table bidding, where the start player bids some amount of money, and each player has to either bid higher or pass. The first player to pass pays nothing, the second player to pass pays half of what they bid, and the third player to pass, obviously, has to pay full price, but gets to go first. Uh, in a two-player game, you simply have a blind bidding, where you put a certain amount of money in your hand, reveal it, and the player who bid more goes first. Anyhow, after that, you're going to move on to production, and in the first round of a year, you produce fish and imports. The amount of fish produced is controlled by a die, and you would roll that die, we come up two and we would consult this chart. It says we produce in harbors two, four, and five. So we would take our disks or our cubes and put them in harbor two, four, and five. And this is where fish will be this turn. We would also produce imports and imports are going to produce everywhere that has imports. So right now it's harbors four and one and that's the only place they'll be all game. Now these harbors can be moved so I just have it set up by the predetermined setup. You could decide where to put them at the beginning of the game to change the map. After we've bid and produced, we're now going to build. And building, you have your choice of building two different things. This will go in turn order. So right now, let's say it's white, red, black. On your turn, you can either pay three money to build a train track, uh, and you would simply put one of your cubes out on one of these divider spots right here. And this is a train track. So you see right here, there's a little cube in the center to show that you own this track. Now, yellow's not a color, but say white builds first, and they build this train track right here. The next player, they would pay their three money, and then the next player would go, and they would have an option of building a train track or building a farm. Now, farms are going to be any area that is in between these train tracks. You'll see these little yellow spots. Farms cost three money in the first year, two in the second year, and one in the third year. So you would basically pay your three money in the first year, and you would put your farm out in the appropriate spot. It's actually Red's turn, so maybe they buy this farm. Uh, now, they'd probably want to be building railroads first before they built farms, but hey, who knows. Uh, but you're going to want to try and build over so you can get into these areas here because you need to deliver goods across tracks in order to earn money. Because after the build phase, which is after everyone has passed and decides they no longer want to build, you're going to go on to the shipping phase, and you're going to do this in turn order as well. And to do this, you're going to be moving goods over railroad lines. So you're going to hope that people have kind of built up these railroad lines. Uh, maybe we're trying to get over to, to this city here. Now, fish and imports have to be delivered to the towns, whereas the things that are produced by these different uh, farms, which will only produce in the fourth phase, are going to be, or fourth round, are going to be delivered to the harbor. So realize that you're only going to get these goods every four rounds or once per year. Uh, so sugar is not going to be so common, but once you do get it, you're going to deliver it to the harbors, not to the towns. And on your turn, if you want to deliver this, you would move it across. So let's say that white wants to deliver this good. They're going to deliver it by the shortest means possible that uses the most of their tracks, because using other players' tracks costs them a money. So to deliver this, they would move it across this one, it's their own. They'd move it across this one, which is black's, and they'd move it across this one to the city. And that would cost them a dollar to black. Now, 
for delivering it, they are going to make a certain amount of money. And it's going to be three money for fish and sugar cane, and it's going to be six money for imports. So they're going to want to try and get these imports first if they can, but right now they can really only build and get this cube to the city, which would earn, or sorry, to the town, which would earn them three money. They've kind of recovered a little bit of their investment. And you're going to go shipping until everybody decides they don't want to ship anymore. And then you'd go on to the next round of the game. We'd produce fish again. You would roll and see where the fish go. And they go, we rolled a one, they'd go in one, three, and five. Now, if you had bought a farm previously, once you got to round four, you would produce sugar cane on all farms that exist. And you'd put a yellow cube on top to show that a sugar is produced there. These sugar can be picked up by any of the nodes that is adjacent to it. So basically, you could pick it up here and then travel it across here, or you could pick it up here and travel it this way. You could pick it up here and travel this way with it. But essentially, you can deliver these just like anything else, except for they have to go to the harbor. So maybe black picks this one up and moves it up here and then over here. They have to pay one to white, but they are going to get $3 for this, so they made a profit of two. Uh, so it's good to invest early, but not that great to invest in farms early because they have a little bit higher cost. You're going to play through all four of the first rounds of a year like this, producing goods, building things, and shipping goods, until you get to round five, which is the tax round. Uh, basically, the only thing you do in tax rounds is that you are going to uh, pay taxes. You are going to owe three money to the bank for every of the railroad track possession cubes that you own, and you're going to owe one to the bank for every farm that you own. So you'll see that there is a benefit to having farms. They're a little bit cheaper on taxes, but they're a little bit costlier when you build them initially, unless it's the third year of the game or even the second year of the game. So, basically, that would be the first year. You'd move on to the next year, start the process all over again with bidding, production, building, and shipping until you get through three years after the last round of taxes. And whoever has the most money, uh, as long as not everyone is negative, uh, or whoever is the least negative, uh, whoever has the most money is going to be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is my quick description of Dai Tao. It really is a very easy game to play, and unfortunately, although I thought it was one I was going to enjoy quite a bit, uh, it's a print-and-play title that gets quite a bit of decent praise, it is not one that I really enjoyed. Something about uh, the simplicity of the game combined with a railroad-type game just wasn't my thing. Um, I didn't think I had enough choices. It was really either build a railroad or build, build a farm. Uh, and then which cube to pick up and whether or not I wanted to go earlier in player order, which sometimes seemed trivial, other times seemed important, but really never seemed all that tense to me. Um, I never felt like I was doing well in the game, although I never felt like I was doing terribly poorly. Uh, and with two players, I definitely wouldn't suggest it. It's a little bit better with three, uh, what with the bidding for turn order and a little bit more uh, tightness in terms of what you can build and how you're going to have to move things. Uh, but overall, for two, I definitely wouldn't suggest it. And for three, I would say that it's still kind of mediocre. Um, either way, you can try it out for free yourself. So if that sounds interesting, uh, check it out or get a copy printed uh, by Print and Play Productions. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?